For today's 4th of July, I wanted to celebrate the history of the United States by exploring literally all 104 wars that the nation has fought across its history. Now obviously, this is a lot of war, so we'll be speeding our way through most of these, but still, I will mention every single war. So let's start with the major wars, the big through line of American military history. The first one is obviously the Revolutionary War for Independence, where after an outrage over taxes and the spilling of some tea, the Americans managed to, with major support from the French, Spanish and Dutch, throw off the shackles of the British and the US of A, the shining city upon a hill, was born. The next great power conflict would occur against the British, again, during the chaos of the Napoleonic Wars. With a combination of Britain not respecting the newly independent state and the Americans fancying their chances against Britain, who was distracted by Napoleon, the US hoped to seize Canada, starting the War of 1812. But Canadian militias, surprisingly, fought extremely hard against the US and the White House was burned down by the British. Luckily though, right at the end of the war, the British attempted an invasion of New Orleans, which Andrew Jackson defeated, meaning that America can still claim victory in the Second War, although it's more often described as a draw. But the next conflict would be one where the US could finally really expand. There was all this land out west, which inexplicably wasn't American, which is just unacceptable. After taxes seceded from Mexico and joined the Union, America and Mexico got into a border conflict and suddenly the Americans had occupied Mexico City. In the peace negotiations, the US gained all of this territory and the Mexican-American War was another American victory. But this would throw fuel on the fire of conflict within the United States, between the southern slave states and the northern free states. With most of the new territory looking primed to become free states and Abraham Lincoln, an anti-slaver elected, the slave states, paranoid about the future of the institution, seceded to form the Confederate States of America. During the Southern War of Secession, despite some difficulties, the Union would prove victorious with a combination of more industry and manpower, as well as having naval supremacy, which the Confederates simply couldn't keep up with. Another victory for the Union. Hey, sorry for the quick intermission, but by far most of you aren't subscribed. If you like the content, consider doing so. Thank you. Whoa, what just happened? It looks like the USS Maine just blew up in Havana Harbor, and Havana is currently owned by the Spanish. Let's go to war. Victory in this Spanish-American war would see the US expand beyond our North American continent, seizing not just Cuba and Puerto Rico, but also their first full overseas colony, the Philippines. After this victory, I'm sure nobody will dare mess with America's boats again. Which leads us to the first round of Europe setting itself on fire, where the US would join in at the last minute, after Russia had already collapsed and French forces were refusing further offensives. It's difficult to say for sure if American intervention was necessary for an Entente victory, but it's undeniable that American forces arriving in Europe revitalized the Entente war effort and further demoralized the already struggling central powers. And at the end of the war, President Wilson sat amongst the victors at Versailles. In contrast, World War II would see the US take a more active role. As the Germans overran the continent, the Americans already supported the British and later the Soviets through lend lease, even before actively joining the war. But then, the Japanese were dumb enough to mess with America's boats in the Pacific, and the Germans decided that they didn't want to win the war anyways, and also declared war on the US. Going into full war mode, the US would supply their allies with just about all they needed and then some, while committing their own naval invasions, until the European Axis collapsed. And after sending two strongly worded letters to the Japanese, they too would surrender. Another American victory. Which leads us to a new conflict, the Cold War. But we can't really count this as a direct war, though if we did, it would also be an American victory. We can, however, single out the wars that the US participated in during this period. And the first of these would be the Korean War. North Korea, tacitly supported by China and the Soviet Union, invaded and almost conquered the South in the first major test of the Cold War. As the Soviet Union was boycotting the UN at the time, the US got UN approval to go wreck some commie tanks, almost counter-conquering North Korea, until China got involved to restore the nation. Since General MacArthur wasn't allowed to start the Third World War, the war stalled into a stalemate instead. 
Still, South Korea wasn't conquered, so it's an American W. This Korean War is often forgotten, overshadowed by the Vietnam War, but an even more forgotten conflict is the Second Korean War. Fought between 1966 and 1969, North Korea would test the resolve of South Korea's defenses, with vague hopes of igniting insurrection in the South. For three years, incidents along the demilitarized zone were common, until in 1969, the conflict died down again. Then the next war is the Vietnam War, where we find our first decisive American defeat. Ever since 1955, the US would concern itself with the future of the former French colonies in Indochina, mainly by attempting to keep a horrific dictatorship intact to prevent the spread of communism. Good job, America! Anyways, the US had learned from Korea, so they ensured to not march their armies into North Vietnam out of fear of Chinese intervention instead choosing to burn the North down with bombs. But at the end of the day, it would all be in vain, as without knocking out the North, the guerrilla war is endless. In 1975, the US would finally withdraw, leaving all of Vietnam to the North. Linked to the Vietnam War were also the Laotian and Cambodian civil wars, where much like in Vietnam, the US would attempt to stop the spread of communism. Both of these wars ended around the same time as the Vietnam War with an American withdrawal leaving Indochina to the communists. The final real important military confrontation during the Cold War would be the Bay of Pigs invasion. Salty about their former de facto colony of Cuba becoming buddies with the Soviets and terrified of Soviet nuclear bombs on the island, the US attempted to arm and aid an invasion of the nation by counter-revolutionaries. It would be a humiliating defeat for the Americans entrenching communism on the island. Then we have a range of minor conflicts related to the Cold War. In Indonesia, the US supported the Parmesta movement, which fought for more regional influence in Indonesian politics. It would fail. In 1958, a political crisis struck Lebanon and the president asked for the US to come in and end it. They did, and then they left, three months adventure. 1965 saw a civil war in the Dominican Republic and since the communists may be involved, the US came in occupied the nation, held an election, and then left. A civil war would then rock Lebanon in 1982, and a multinational force would try to come in to restore order, they would fail miserably, and then they'd leave, while the civil war would continue for six more years. The small Caribbean island of Grenada, under communist control, had a political crisis in 1983. This political insecurity would see the US invading and restoring a democratic government on the island. In 1986, the US would lead an airstrike on Libya in an undeclared war. The US would lose a plane, Gaddafi's daughter may have been killed, and both sides claim victory in this conflict. Then we have the tanker war, where Iraq and Iran, as part of their larger war, were messing with each other's boats. This would lead to a UN resolution, deciding that they were tired of the entire war, and the US intervened to put an end to the war. As the final war of the Cold War era, we have the US invading Panama to arrest the Panamanian president, who was a side character in the Narcos series. This leads us to the modern era, characterized by there being no more Soviets. And, at least for a little while, the US acting as the sole global hegemon. The first conflict of this era was the Gulf War, which saw Iraq attempt to conquer Kuwait before a US-led coalition came in to politely explain that that was in fact not okay. The US restored Kuwait and placed sanctions on Iraq to prevent it from happening again, leading to a new conflict. The well-named Iraqi no-fly zone enforcement operations, a long period where the US enforced a no-fly zone over northern and southern Iraq to protect the Kurds in the north and the Shiites in the south. The US would also intervene into the Somali civil war, but they would fail to defeat the Somali National Alliance. During the Yugoslav Wars, the US would force a stalemate between the fighting parties and lead NATO involvement in keeping the peace thereafter. After a military junta cooped the Haitian government, the US intervened to restore the democratically elected leader. During the Kosovo War, NATO would bomb Serbia to enforce de facto Kosovan independence. Then we have the Afghan Wars, which would be a decade-long slog, as the US came in to capture the perpetrators of the 9-11 attacks before shifting to trying to build a stable, democratic regime in the nation, despite what Sleepy Joe claims after the US left in 2021. The American intervention into Yemen is still an ongoing conflict, where the US fights against Islamic radicals and Houthi rebels, 
Their success we cannot yet decide. The Iraq war would see the US invade Iraq under false pretenses in hopes of building yet another Middle Eastern democracy. Militarily, a great success initially, the US would grind itself down in guerrilla combat for a decade only for the new democratic Iraq to vote to align itself with Iran, the US's enemy. So good job America? I guess that counts as a victory. The American intervention in northwest Pakistan would see the US execute drone strikes in Pakistani territory against radical groups with the latest drone strike occurring in 2018. The US would also lead a second intervention into Somalia, this time against Islamic radicalism, but with the civil war still ongoing, we can't claim victory for either side yet. Linked to the war in Somalia is Operation Ocean Shield, a response to pirate attacks on ships in the region. The US would lead a NATO operation to secure the sea lanes and piracy dropped by 90%. NATO intervention into Libya wasn't quite as successful. They overthrew Gaddafi, but Libya's civil war only escalated. Still, the US accomplished their goal, good job I guess? Operation Observant Compass would see the US intervene in Central Africa against the Lord's Resistance Army, a horrific extremist group in the region, to great success. An American intervention into Niger is still ongoing, with the US aiming to combat Islamic extremism. A similar intervention against ISIL in Iraq ended with the defeat of the extremist, but the sister operation into Syria is still ongoing as their civil war drags on. Finally, another intervention into Libya would see a radical reduction of radicalism in the nation and a ceasefire ending the civil war. With that, we have reached the modern day, but along the way we have skipped many minor conflicts. Let's go over those now. The Quasi-War was a naval conflict between France and the US, sparked by disputes between the two states over how and in what way the two states were in alliance and what their agreements over commerce were exactly. The conflict would see the end of the US-French alliance, France would stop raiding American ships and France would renounce any claims they had on American territory. The first Barbary War would see the US Navy fighting pirates of the Mediterranean over Barbary raiding, especially after the capture of Americans by Barbary pirates. While the US counts this war as a win, the US in the end paid for the release of their people and piracy against the US continued. This would lead to the second Barbary War, where the US would achieve a more decisive victory against the Barbary states, leading to the US and Europeans no longer paying tribute for safe passage through the Western Mediterranean. The Second Opium War would see minor American involvement, with the US participating in the unequal treaties against China. The Utah War would see the federal government come into conflict with the Mormons, who had hoped to create a massive state called Deseret. The conflict would end with the US not charging the Mormons for treason, if they accepted federal authority, which they did. Then we have American involvement into the Mexican Reform War, a civil war between liberal and conservative elements where the US would support the liberal faction, the side which would eventually win the war. The next one can barely be counted as a full war, but it's too funny to ignore, the Pig War. An American farmer had shot a British owned pig and this, coupled with territorial disputes over some islands, almost led to rogue American commanders invading Western Canada. Eventually, cooler heads prevailed, America gained the islands, and the only casualty was the pig. Over in Asia, the US was feeling adventurous, launching an invasion to Formosa, modern-day Taiwan, to seek revenge for a ship sank by the Paiwan tribe of the island. The expedition was a humiliation for the US, as they were defeated through guerrilla combat. A couple of years later, the US would go onto an expedition to Korea, attempting to bully the Koreans into securing trade concessions for the US. Militarily, it was a success, but diplomatically, the US failed to break Korean isolationism. Then we have the massively influential Las Cuevas War, where some American cattle was stolen from Texas to Mexico, and American forces crossed the border to return the cattle successfully. During the Egyptian expedition, American ships would be present in Alexandria to safeguard American lives and property as the British shelled the city. The Garza Revolution was a minor revolt against the Mexican government, but after the rebels crossed into Texas, the US joined Mexico in bringing down the revolt. The Yaqui Wars were part of a century-long conflict between Hispanic colonizers and the Yaqui people, in which the US would assist the Mexicans on several occasions. The Second Samoan Civil War would see the US, UK and Germany 
fight over control over the Samoan Islands in the Pacific. The Germans would support the rebels in the West, and the Americans, the Eastern government. Compromise won out, as the two great powers just divided the islands between themselves. The Philippine-American War was a colonial conflict that began as the US took over Spain's role as ruler over the islands, as the US brutally repressed native uprisings. A related conflict was the Moro Rebellion, where specifically some southern Philippine islands fought against US domination, but they too would lose. The Boxer Rebellion would see a popular uprising in China against Western interests in the nation. So, a coalition of states, including the US, intervened to secure Western domination over China. During the Mexican Revolution, the US and Mexico would fight a border war for about a decade, as spillover from the Civil War pestered America's southern borders. The conflict would only resolve itself after Mexico's Civil War had ended. 1912 would see Afro-Cubans revolt for more rights, only for the Cuban military to be joined by the US in cracking down on the revolt in order to protect the profits of American businessmen. During the previously mentioned Mexican Revolution, the US had another conflict with Mexico, occupying the city of Veracruz, forcing the American president to resign before leaving. The next couple of conflicts are known as the Banana Wars. The first was an occupation of Nicaragua for two decades, mainly to prevent others from building a canal there that could compete with the American one in Panama. Next, we have the occupation of Haiti, again done to secure American business interests. During the two-decade occupation, Haiti would be heavily exploited for America's benefit. A similar occupation would happen in the Dominican Republic as the small state failed to repay European loans and the Europeans threatened military intervention, which was unappealing to the US. Finally, the Entente, including the US, would intervene in the Russian Civil War in an attempt to defeat the Red Army. This intervention mainly entailed fighting in the Far East, but as it became clear that the Whites couldn't win the war, the US backed off in 1920. With that, we have discussed the majority of wars, but there is one category I ignored, and it's the biggest of them all. We have 40 American Indian Wars to talk about. Since there are so many, and most of them are quite minor, I have to be very brief, but I will still name all of them for completion's sake. The first are the Cherokee American Wars, a series of conflicts in the South as the young state attempts to impose their will upon the region. The Cherokee alternatively allied with Britain and Spain against the US before the war spilled into the Northwest Indian War, where the US would achieve victory against the natives to claim control over the Northwest. Another major war is Tecumseh's War, which would couple itself with the War of 1812. Tecumseh, supported by the British, would unite the natives of the region against American encroachment on their land. The US would win the conflict, and Britain would thereafter stop supporting the natives following the end of the War of 1812. The Creek War would see the US seize much land from the Red Stick Creek. During the First Seminole War, American forces would pursue the Seminole people into Spanish Florida. The Spanish objected, but then they realized that they couldn't effectively protect Florida anymore, ceding it to the Americans as the Seminoles were defeated. The Arikara War was an indecisive one, where the US wanted to punish the Arikara for attacking some fur trappers, fighting a bit, and then leaving. The Winnebago War would see the Americans seize lead mining regions from the Ho-Chunk and Three Fires peoples. The Black Hawk War would be an important one for the US, as it would be the final conflict over the old Northwest region. Following American victory in this war, the natives of the region would be increasingly deported to the West. The Second Seminole War would see many of the Seminole people forcibly deported to the Indian Territory, modern-day Oklahoma. The Comanche Wars were a long-term conflict between the Comanche people, Spain, Mexico and the US, as the Comanche resisted settlers coming into their territory. The Comanche would eventually be defeated by the Americans after fighting for a very long time, but they were massively hurt by cholera and smallpox outbreaks wearing down their effectiveness. And as the US expanded west, so did conflicts against the natives. The New Northwest's first war would be the Cayuse War, where the US massacred and seized Cayuse lands. The Apache Wars would be another series of conflicts where the US attempted to force the Apache people into reservations as the US seized their lands. The Navajo War would see the US deport the Navajo people from Arizona to New Mexico 
while seizing their ancestral lands. The Puget Sound War would see several groups of natives removed from their homeland in Washington state, same for the Rogue River Wars. The Third Seminole War would see the Seminole people again forced from their land down south to new territory that American settlers didn't care about, yet. The Yakima Wars would see the Yakama people forced onto a reservation. The Dakota War would see a massive reshuffling in the US reservation system after Dakota war bands were defeated. The Colorado War was an interesting one, as US forces massacred 600 Cheyenne people in a raid, but rather than celebrating a great victory, the US condemned the raid, holding military and congressional hearings against the commander in charge. Would the US learn from this event and treat the natives better? No. The next war is Snake's War, a forgotten conflict even at the time since it coincided with the Civil War, but it was actually the deadliest Indian war in the West with 1800 casualties. The Powder River Expedition saw the US attempt to conquer native lands in the Montana and Dakota territories, but they mostly failed. Red Cloud's War is an interesting one as it's the first Indian war which the natives straight up won. In the Treaty of Fort Laramie, the Great Sioux Reservation was established in Dakota and some lands were ceded fully to the natives. The Comanche Campaign was a campaign against the Comanche tribe forcing their relocation to a reservation. The Modoc War would see the Modoc people move to Indian territory. The Red River Wars would see the remaining natives of Texas forcibly move to the Indian territory. The Great Sioux Wars would see the Americans revisit the previously mentioned Great Sioux Reservation as the US broke their treaty and encroached on Sioux land anyway. The Buffalo Hunter War would see some Comanche warriors leave their reservation and raid some American settlers until a group of Buffalo Hunters defeated them. The Nez Perce War would see the Nez Perce tribe imprisoned and move to reservations. The Bannock War would see the US defeat and forcibly remove the Bannock people. In the Cheyenne War, the Northern Cheyenne people attempt to return to their homeland only for the US Army to prevent this. The Sheep Eater Indian War would be the final one in the Pacific Northwest where the US defeated a group of Shoshone warriors. Victorio's War would see Chief Victorio of the Apache tribe fight against Mexico and the US against forced relocation. He would achieve some victories but was eventually pacified. The White River War would see the Ute lose most of their land. The Crow War would see the Crow tribe leave their reservation and the US forcing them back. Then the undisputed best named war, the Ghost Dance War, would see the US crack down on the Ghost Dance ceremony of the Lakota Sioux people, where the Lakota danced to reunite the living with spirits of the dead. The US took offense since the spirits were then supposed to fight on the Lakota's behalf to end American westward expansion and unite Native Americans across the region. Crazy Snake's War would see a group of Creek rebels come into conflict with the US before being pacified. With that, there are only two more Indian wars to discuss. The first is the Bluff War, where the Ute accused the Paiute chief of murdering a shepherd, leading to war between the Ute and the Paiute and the US got involved to end the conflict. The very final war is the Posey War, where the Ute people attempted to relocate to the Navajo Mountain only for the US Army to stop this movement. With that, we have discussed every single American war, including Indian wars, that gives America a 75% win rate, wars ended inconclusively 12% of the time, and America plainly lost 10% of their wars. The remaining 4% are still ongoing. Without the Indian Wars, which were quite one-sided towards the Americans, America won 66% of their wars, drew 14% and lost another 40. Again, the remaining 6% are ongoing conflicts. But with that, I'll end this video. Thank you all for watching, consider leaving a like and a comment to support the content, subscribe for two more videos every single week. To continue watching, click on one of the two videos on screen now. Again, thank you all for watching and goodbye.